Hi guys, it's Sarah with Ampersand Unique Gifts and Home Decor. Today I am bringing you a video of three bread box makeovers. One of which I had to think outside of the box because it gave me a little bit of a challenge. If you like trash to treasures and thrift haul videos as well as organizational craft room type videos, please make sure to hit subscribe and click that notification bell so you'll never miss another video from me again. So I'm bringing you the introduction this way because when we get started, we're starting in the shop that I share with my husband and he was working on something on the other side and it was a little loud. So it'll be a voiceover, but I wanted to have this opportunity to just say, hey, and thanks for coming. And let's see, I hope you like the outcomes as much as I did. Okay, so we're gonna start with this 90s looking homemade bread box. Uh, it's cute as can be, it's all natural. It hasn't had anything done to it. When we first bought it, it had a paper towel holder screwed into the side. Thought that was a really cute idea, but the lady that we picked it up from said that she and her husband had struggled. They could not figure out why the drawer wouldn't open. Um, my husband took one look at it and realized it's because the screw went right through the drawer, and of course then it wouldn't open anymore. So we fixed that, took it off, and we're going to put this chicken wire behind where that hole is but we're going to change it so it's not the heart this bread box was actually on my counter this is mine i've had it for years and uh, you can see i forgot that i had something in it that i was carrying out to the shop um, but i'm just going to give it a new look and it's going to stay mine i really love that one um, this third one was a goodwill find that little thing that looks like porcelain is just plastic and this is a, some kind of laminate over top of a press board, so it's really shiny. Um, I started with giving everything a really good cleaning, um, just cleaning off anything that I could see that was there, and then I took this one over to give it a good prime with my Rust-Oleum Flat Black. The goal was to paint it with this and then cover it with a white and distress that black through. You'll find out later I actually decided I really loved the black. Um, here, I, since I could not get that little plate out of there, I decided to at least fill the crack around it so that it, um, so that you couldn't tell it was there when I was finished. So I took off the hardware, cleaned it really well, and then ended up deciding to spray paint it just to get it that flat black I wanted. And the best way to really clean this one since it was raw wood was just to give it a good sanding. So. Over the entire piece, I sanded it with just a, a 220 with my orbital sander, and it gave everything that fresh look. It looked like it had actually been somewhere where it had maybe a little bit of grease splash and stuff. Um, sanding off my, my putty here, it was just perfect. It completely smoothed it out where you could hardly even tell that there was anything there at all. If you ran your fingers over it, you could tell a little bit, but it was just perfect for what I needed. So I went ahead and used my same Durham's uh, water putty to um, fill in these holes in the side. I didn't want the look of the little plugs poking out, so I tightened the screws really tight and I put this putty in there and let's just hope it stays tight forever because you're not going to be able to, um, to screw them back in if you need to. So I put it in there, pounded it down. The thing that's awesome about this putty is you can make it as thick or as thin as you need depending on what you're doing with it. It is so versatile and then so easy to sand. Um, so off camera, my daughter went ahead and made a freehanded oval with the jigsaw to cut out that, out that heart. And that way, um, it's just going to kind of update it a little bit. So here, I painted everything with, um, it's Deco Art Americana Decor in the color Carbon. This is an awesome paint. It will um, cover on first coat on almost anything, whether you're making a chalkboard or whether you just really like that flat black. Um, this is my favorite go-to paint for that. Um, so I gave the entire piece a coat of that and here I just kind of sprayed even screws so I was going through and spraying the hardware. Once everything had dried I gave it a good distressing and again using 220 with my orbital sander just to bring back some of that natural wood um, and give this piece that farmhouse decor that I was looking for. Um, it just it also helps to just smooth out the paint get any of the brush strokes that you might have and, and get those smoothed out um, after i did this i went in and sanded the holes that i had filled using a little rougher uh, paint or sandpaper here just to kind of get that smooth 
Um, and then I did a little bit of an over over everything, but because this was that laminate over that press board, I knew I was going to have a bleed through problem. So I just covered the entire thing with a couple coats of shellac. So over here, I'm getting my chicken wire. This is a craft chicken wire. And it was so easy to cut that I actually ended up just going back and using my scissors. I had the wire cutters and it was more of a pain in the neck to try to get them in there than it was just to use scissors to cut it. So cutting it out and just getting it as close to the size with enough room to still put it on there. I was gonna use my brad nailer, but I didn't have any short enough little staples. So I ended up resorting to my Starbond medium glue and it was... Okay, so I put all the hardware on and then I decided I wanted to wax. So I am taking it back off so that I can wax before the hardware so that's what i'm doing here it's just uh getting this hardware back off of here i cleaned it real well with the crud cutter but uh i um went ahead and gave it a quick spray because i wasn't 100 percent sure how uh clean and everything it was and as you can see it obviously wasn't quite dry when I put it there it left a mark but that's okay um so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna do that last um do the pieces separately I think I'll take this off too um but I'm gonna add this Waverly Wax and Antique just to give it a little bit different look. All right. I'm gonna pour some of it in this bowl and apply it with a sponge brush. I know a lot of times people just use a rag, um, but I'm gonna do that and then wipe it with my rag. But I just really uh, wanted something to kind of where I had that distressed look on the edges and it was so light. I really wanted something a little more um, dark and, and not to quite look like it was so newly distressed, but give it something to kind of darken up that wood where that was. And then I needed some kind of wax on my paint job here. And then I'm just going to take it and wipe it back. So can you see the difference between the two where it has that real fresh look and then here we have something that looks a little darker here you can kind of see where that's before and that's after. touches so I put the antiquing wax in here um, it is just uh, it, it's not really going to stay completely um, it'll it'll wipe out but it did kind of tone it down um, where it wasn't necessarily so bright 
um, looking brand new. Uh, of course, I just wiped it with a rag. Okay, so when I tried to put this in, I glued it down. It's on really well. It's very strongly on there. But as you can see, this is not a very pretty look. Um, so I have this runner. I'm not 100% sure what it necessarily would be called. Um, but it is, it's from Walmart, and it's just a roll of burlap, and it's a pretty tight um, burlap as opposed to some of the ribbons and things that you find. And what I'm going to do is cover the underneath side so it'll be what's on the inside so that when you're looking at it, you're actually going to see this. And I don't know, you know, I, I call this a bread box makeover. But, and I know you can't really see me. Hi. So, um, I called this a bread box makeover, but I don't know necessarily that this would be a bread box. I guess there's room for bread inside there, and then of course it has the drawer on the bottom. But in case somebody just had it and they had something else in there, and I don't even know that you necessarily would want to look in there and see your bread either. But um, I just thought this would do two things. The first one is it's going to cover up the messy chicken wire um, gluing on there. But then secondly, it's also just going to add this nice finish on the inside and keep you from being able to necessarily see inside if somebody was using it just to store stuff. It could be their junk drawers um, and something like that just sitting on the counter. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to uh, glue it down really well. I will paint some glue on here to try to get a fresh... Um, attachment all over so that it's equally fastened down and will stay. I don't want it to be something that's really pretty when they buy it and a month later this is all curling up off of it. So we really want to make sure that we have it down and connected everywhere. So uh, keep an eye. Here we go. So I cut my burlap strip a little bit bigger than my lid because I wanted to be able to cut it down after I was sure that it had adhered everywhere really well. So using a thick coat of fabric glue, I covered the entire underside of my lid and then flipped it over to pick up the burlap. I used my glue bottle as a rolling pin and rolled all over to make sure that it was adhered everywhere. And then I used the rest of my bread box as a little extra weight and left it there to dry. I loved the look of the antique wax over the black so much that I went back out to the shop and instead of spraying white over my bread box that I was keeping, I decided that I was going to distress it and add that wax instead. So normally when working with a roll top like this, um, it would be good to take it apart and spray everything uh, just to make sure that you got everywhere. But since I was distressing this back, I wasn't too worried about it. The original black coat was supposed to be an undercoat anyway. So um, no worries there. Left it all put together to be able to do that. I also didn't do anything to the inside of it. Um, had I been selling this, I would have sanded it and then added some, maybe some hemp oil or some butcher block oil. But since I'm keeping it, it's all good. So I'm on this last bread box of our three bread box transformation. This one has given me a bit of a challenge because of what it was made out of. It was a very slick laminate over top of just a press board. So it's not real wood and it has slick laminate top. So it has several coats um, of paint. It, so I painted it with a primer and then I covered it. So it's doing pretty well on the side. But you can see here on the side of the front, right here, um, it just still wants to streak. And I'm having a terrible time. So we're going to use a light textured paint. And then we're going to cover it with some decoupage paper. Um, on the inside, it only has one layer so far. You can see how it looks. I think I am probably going to try to cover that. I know I've done white, but I think I'm actually maybe going to put a darker color in there and try to find something that um, maybe will be a little less streaky. So I, I don't know. Um, I've got gray on my paper. It's kind of a grayish black, and I think over this white, it's going to be even lighter. So I don't know. We might use a gray. Um, We'll see what I decide after I do this. So here we go. I'm gonna first I'm gonna make my textured paint 
Um, I'm going to use this big round flat paintbrush. It'll be good to just dop on. Apparently I used dark the last time I used that. <laughs> Oops. Um, there we go. Like it never happened. Um, but it'll be real good to stipple that paint on there and get that textured look. Might even have a little bit of a gray in it. Um, you know, you think you get the paintbrushes clean. Um, but I just like that it's a big and that it's flat. So, um, got my, uh, my repurposed bowls here. Um, I'm going to be using the Rust-Oleum Linen White to do this. Um, it's just a, it's chalked by Rust-Oleum. You can get it on a spray paint or, um, the actual liquid paint, whatever you call that versus spray paint. And then I'm going to do what I always do, which is mix it with baking soda. So it'll just be, um, depending on how textured you want it, that'll determine really how much baking soda. I don't use any recipe. Um, some folks will say equal parts, but I really don't want it um, to have a rough concrete look. Um, I just want something that'll give a little bit of a texture, but remember we're going to decoupage over the majority of it. So I just need something to kind of hide the edges where the decoupage isn't. Um, had a tough decision whether or not to decoupage first and then just try to fill in the gaps, but I really don't know that I want to do that. Um, so we're going to try it this way first. So, uh, so hang out and watch and we'll see how it looks when it's done. So I, again, I don't have a, um, a formula that I use. I just add baking soda until I get the texture that I want. You don't want to add too much or sometimes the paint doesn't want to stick. Um, but I just wanted it to have a little bit of texture because I was trying to add that thickness to cover up where the paint wouldn't stick very well to that slick surface. So here I added two tablespoons. I just have a little tablespoon that I keep in the bag. Um, so I mixed it up really well and then using that big thick flat brush I just dotted it on there I stippled it on there um, here you can just kind of see um, where it's going you can kind of tell the paint looks a little bit gray it obviously it dries white but um, it just looks like a different color than that already dried white coat that's on there um, my method is always just glob a bunch on there and then I'll go back and kind of pick it up like you would a painter's palette um, but I covered everywhere the entire box um, on the outside, making sure I got in the corners, picking out the little brush hairs. And I, I really liked the way it covered. It was perfect. And I had made so much that I ended up actually covering a few jars as well um, with the leftover paint. So you can already tell how much it's covering. So I'm really excited. I think it's going to have accomplished the goal um, that I had here, which was to not be able to see any of those streaky places where the paint wasn't quite covering. Um, and the reason I went ahead and opened it like that was just to try to break any of the seal so that it doesn't get too sticky, but I wanna be able to keep that textured edge right on here, because you'll see that when it's closed. But then again, um, we'll do something and paint the inside after we get this outside dry. But I am really excited with how it turned out um, got a little hump of paint right there. Let's see if I can get it off. Um, now, um, you know, I don't think I'm going to have any trouble decoupaging over the top of this. And that's really what I want to do here. There's a big clump of paint there that must have been, must have been the original coat. I don't think it's the... not coming from this but now we'll cover it back up where I did it um, I keep working it and patting it because as it dries if it's a little bit thicker it'll kind of make a little bit of a bubble instead of the texture so I just like to keep um, smashing any of those down while um, still keeping that texture and this has got to be the most bristle losing brush I think I've ever seen I don't know how old this is so it's not really very fair to take it out on the brush um, and obviously from the um, gray stuff that you fall, saw falling out of it, it hasn't obviously been cleaned the best way. So I won't really uh, give it too much grief, but my goodness, I've had to pick a lot of those bristles out. I'm glad it's a textured paint, not a smooth paint. Um, but what we're going to be doing is putting um, this is our decoupage paper that we're going to put over it. This is from Jamie Ray Vintage. 
um, at jamierayvintage.com and you can, she's got a wide range of decoupage papers to choose from. Um, and this is the one that we're going to go for this and I've kind of mapped out in my head what part's going to cover where, but like I said, it's not going to completely just wrap around the box. There's going to still be these edges and such. So that's why I wanted to really go for that texture all over. Um, it's a smooth enough texture. I'm not too worried about getting my decoupage paper over it. Um, I have so I cut out my decoupage paper and then I made the edges rough so that it didn't have just a straight edge on it. Um, and I measured it out, figuring out where that door was going to open and I cut it. And then using that same technique, I roughed up the edges. I just take a clean paintbrush and a tiny little bit of water and I paint along the edge and then I use my finger to pull that so that it creates that rough edge. Um, so you can see there where it's rough and where it's flat. That way it doesn't have that big flat uh, edge where it looks like it was cut with scissors. So I went old school attaching this decoupage where I used just the medium. There was no ironing. There was no, you know, all the different methods that exist for decoupage. Using the Debbie's Design Diary DIY liquid patina and the crystal clear, I, um, I had an old bottle and then I had to switch over to a new one, but I, um, I cut my decoupage paper into the different pieces that I wanted, figured out where they were gonna go, and then using a sponge brush, I just attached it and I did that for each of the pieces that I added and then took a thick coat and put over the top. And I, at one point I started to use my brayer to try to flatten them down and I found that it actually worked easier when I just used my fingers. So I did get a little gluey um, as I added that medium on there. But um, it was, like I said, it turned out to be the best way to smooth that down and it really went on well. I was very happy. This paper is amazing. It's from um, Jamie Ray Vintage, and you can order it from jamierayvintage.com. But I just pressed it down in the edges. I pressed it down um, here where it has the little lip and made sure that it was all stuck, and then just put that coat over the top, and again, using my fingers, just smashed it all down. Uh, did the same thing with the pieces that I put on the side. This paper, I actually still have some of the grain stripe left and some of the words, so I actually have quite a bit of this left that I can put on a different project. So it turned out to be the perfect thing for this farmhouse bread box. Um, definitely a change from that little blue box that I picked up at the Goodwill. <laughs> So after I got all my decoupage paper on there and had everything pressed down, I went back to the inside and covered it with a gray color. It matched the lettering on the outside of my decoupage paper and the coverage was awesome. It covered uh, really in one coat and I really love the way that gray looked with it. Okay guys, last step on my box here. We've decoupaged, we've, uh, we've painted the inside here. I've got stuff to put my handle on it. Um, so the inside has been painted in distress. The next step is to completely seal it. So I am gonna go ahead and use my um, liquid patina to seal it since that's what I had used here. You could use Big Top or any um, like the Sweet Pickens top coat, any sealant, but I'm going to go ahead and just stick with the liquid patina. I'm going to pour it into a separate bowl um, so that I don't contaminate my brand new big jar here. And we're just going to do an overall seal. I'm going to start with the outside. Um, well, actually, I'm probably going to start with the inside. Let's do that first. Uh, and then we're going to switch to the outside and it's going to get a couple coats of everything. Um, I'm going to wait for that to dry, then I'm gonna put some, I think I'm probably gonna add some of the, the waxes to it to kind of blend in the edges around where the uh, decoupage paper is. I painted this black, but I think I'm probably gonna add some white wax to it just so it's not so um, stark bright here uh, in the middle of this. I want it to kind of blend in a little bit better because my colors here are a lot more gray. So here we go, um, do this. And then we are finished with this bad boy. And I will show you the finished uh, product of all three of them. So here we go.
So this has been sealed and it's dry and I'm going to use white wax. Um, it was sealed with the liquid patina. So I am not actually going to, um, I'm not going to use a clear wax. I am just going to go straight with my white wax over top of the liquid patina. Um, I'm going to So I absolutely love this white wax. Uh, it goes on so smooth and I just paint all over everything with my little wax brush and then I wipe it back and it leaves that nice uh, worn look to everything it gets rid of any kind of flaws that you had it just goes in there so I covered the whole inside and the edge and then just wiped it back with um, a rag I, I don't um, mind using paper towels as much with the white. I tend to not use paper towels with the black because I want to make sure I don't leave any kind of thing on there. But with the white, I'm just using one of those uh, leftover paper towels from where I wrap my brushes up in a paper towel when they're drying. Okay, so we're going to get ready to add the dark wax on the outside. So I'm going to actually use a, uh, well, actually it's an old cloth diaper, but I'm going to use um, a cloth rag instead of a paper towel with my dark wax. I don't know why I just I don't like to use paper towels and I just have little brushes that I use. These are just some old paint brushes. Got to kind of loosen it up a little bit. Um, I just use little ones where I don't tend to do all over quite the same way that I do uh, with a white wax. So we're going to just kind of get it in here kind of get it in the corners um, and then when I go to wipe it off I will wipe it over the whole piece so that it'll kind of even it out where it won't just be dark in the corners but it'll give that kind of antiqued look so we'll just start here with the back okay You can see I just put it here in the edges. I'm going to wipe that back. And as I do, I just kind of spread it out across the whole thing. So I've got it on my rag and I'll just kind of just kind of even it out so it doesn't just look like I painted dark in the corner. So I'm going to do this to the entire outside. until I get where I like it. 